Hi everyone, it's Emily, and for this month's pickups video, I have a lot of things to talk about with, I guess, the most exciting thing is I finally bought a PS5 and also a monitor to go along with it. So I'm gonna save all the talk about how the PS5 is and my first impressions with the system towards the end of this video and kind of share a little bit of a desk tour. Uh, warning, it's not gonna be pretty. There's no like cord management or anything and I have a very odd space to work with, but it should give you a good look at what the state of my kind of workspace looks like. So game wise, I didn't pick up too many new games, but I do have a few different console systems represented in this little pile here. So I'm gonna first start with some of the earlier games and um, follow up with more recent releases. So uh, the earliest console I have represented here is the PSP. So I finally picked up another PSP game since I started collecting towards the beginning of this year. And this is a title that I really wanted to prioritize because it's really up my alley and I've heard nothing but good things about it. And that is Jean d'Arc. So this is a level five strategy RPG and it's sort of like a fantasy retelling of Joan of Arc. Level 5 has become one of my favorite developers and I'm so happy that they're back and I'm really looking forward to all the new titles they'll be releasing on either this year or next year or I don't really know what their timeline is. But I'm really hoping with the success of um, all their upcoming titles that we'll see kind of a return of more JRPGs from them, particularly some strategy RPGs like they did with Jean d'Arc. So I haven't looked too closely at how this strategy RPG really differs from what else was offered on the PSP because there's a lot of strategy RPGs. I just heard from so many different people who really love the system that this is one of the top quality strategy RPGs the system offers. And even with Level 5's return, I don't really see them bringing back John Dark to modern systems anytime soon. So I thought this was a PSP title I really wanted to prioritize before prices start rising as we've been kind of seeing the trend. And I'm just really happy to have this title marked off my list. I have this long list of uh, unique JRPGs that the PSP had that I think might not see re-releases or remasters anytime soon. So I've been really trying to prioritize those and hoping in these next summer months to pick up a few more. If you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them. Then up next, I have another Sony handheld system that I kind of bought on a whim. So I ended up getting The Lost Child for the PS Vita after hearing news that NIS America was erasing this game from all of their digital storefronts on multiple systems. So um, this is available on the PS Vita and also the Nintendo Switch. Uh, but I opted for the Vita version because the Switch prices, um, by the time I was looking for a copy, were just through the roof. Um, and I think it's really expensive right now, unfortunately. But I was really happy to grab this at the price I did, and it's actually a sealed Vita game. So I've always been curious about The Lost Child. I've been trying to get more into dungeon crawlers, and I hear this one is all right. It's not necessarily the best in the genre, but it's pretty sufficient for what it does and has some cool art styles and um, story kind of mechanisms. But overall, it's considered fairly mediocre. And it's also supposed to be a follow-up to a game that was offered on the PS3 that I'm forgetting the name of now, I'll have it here. But um, I hear that you don't have to play the first game to enjoy this. But unfortunately, I think we're gonna see this pattern happen more with NIS America and possibly some other um, smaller um, publishing companies. I know the whole licensing thing could be very tricky and with contracts and everything, uh, you can't always just extend the life of a game, especially if it's not selling well on um, these older systems and um, kind of keep their lifespan a bit on the digital storefronts. So this whole ordeal with NIS America delisting various games off of various storefronts has just kind of re-cemented my appreciation for physical media. Now, of course, it's not always perfect, especially when we're seeing physical games needing or requiring multiple patches and downloads in order to work and function properly. And of course, there'll always be emulation. And I think just removing these games off of these storefronts um, just kind of takes down those barriers of um, going down that route. As a collector, I found this landscape a little tricky to navigate because on one end, I really enjoy owning physical media, but on the other end, I don't like overpaying for it, especially if uh, whatever purchase I make is not gonna go into the pockets of the developers and go on and make bigger and better games. So I feel a little conflicted about picking up a copy of The Lost Child because I'm not, again, sure if I'm gonna enjoy this because I do hear it's rather on the mediocre side. And I've just been trying to do better when it comes to FOMO purchases. So I, I feel a little conflicted about this one, but we'll see how this goes. All right, now let's get into all the Nintendo Switch games. With this first one, I picked up on a sale at Woot.com, which is part of Amazon, and they often host various deals of the day and kind of flash sale stuff. Uh, and this is a title that I've been looking for for a while, but I wanted to get it 
fairly discounted because I think there are some issues with the physical release. I think there's some sort of bug or something that needs to be patched out that has kind of required in order to enjoy playing through this game. And that is the Steelbook launch edition of Chaos, uh, the double pack. So this includes both Chaos Head Noah as well as Chaos Child. And this is part of the Science Adventure series, so um, which starts off with Steins Gate and goes into Science Robots and um, all these various visual novels um, part of this universe. And I don't particularly enjoy buying Steelbook launch editions unless they're of my favorite series. And I made an exception for this one because it comes with both the Steelbook as well as the standard case um, inside here. So I don't know too much about the story because I really try not to seek spoilers whenever possible, especially for visual novels, but it does revolve around your typical Japanese high school setting, but there's a lot of dark and gritty things in here. And just looking at the ESRB rating, um, there's intense violence, blood and gore, sexual themes, and partial nudity, language. So these are very much mature visual novels from my understanding. And it looks like No Ahead involves around a horrific crime that some high school students uh, want to solve. Whereas Chaos Child is another uh, seeking out the truth um, scenario. So I'm really happy I have these. I'm still trying to get uh, Steins Gate Zero for the Vita as well as Science Robotics on the Switch. I'm just waiting for a good price to grab both of those before diving more into this long uh, kind of universe of the science adventure games. So this next game is one I already featured on the channel with an unboxing and that is for Charade Maniacs. So I was gifted the limited edition from Idea Factory to just cover a review of the unboxing um, for the collector's edition. Um, and I also shared a first impressions of this game. And I haven't made too much more progress because I have a lot of games I've been kind of rotating, which I'll get more into later. So I have been enjoying this so far, though it, it's kind of a strange take on a mystery thriller because of just how many lighthearted moments there are um, despite uh, having this whole kidnap scenario that's um, unfolding. So the basic synopsis is that this high school girl along with 10 other guys are kidnapped and transported into some unknown world where they have to reenact various dramatic scenes um, in order to accumulate enough points uh, to leave. So they're all being held against their will and forced to reenact scenes that they may or may not be very comfortable acting out and there's a lot of sci-fi elements where if someone dies during one of these reenactments, they magically uh, survive after the scene ends. And while all this is going on, you're also told that um, among all the cast members, there is a traitor amongst them. So they have to figure out who is orchestrating everything behind the scenes and kind of figure out what's going on. So it is a very interesting visual novel in many respects. I don't know if I'll be able to finish all the routes because I think there's at least 10 since there's 10 romanceable characters, but I am curious kind of what's going on. And I've already played a couple routes so far and I wanna see how the other ones differ. And then this last Switch game is one I picked up from Limited Run. So this is, I think, the second to last Limited Run thing I have pre-ordered. I think I just have one more and then I'm hoping I'm done because it's just too much, I think, keeping up with all these limited term releases. And I really wanna be a little bit more selective um, moving forward. Uh, whenever ordering from these sort of companies. But the one that I got was Garden Story. So this is supposed to be a very wholesome adventure action RPG where you play as this little grape who goes out and is acting as a kind of a guardian and fighting off an invasive rot that is plaguing the little community of fruit and vegetables. So I think I ordered this sometime last year. Um, it was quite a while ago, but I'm glad to have this nevertheless. And it does come with, I think one of the last limited run uh, trading cards that they have. Um, they stopped printing these, I guess, for cost reasons. So along with Garden Story, I picked up a PS4 game called The Wanderer, Frankenstein's Creature. And there's actually a Switch version of this game that is offered in Japan that includes English on the cart. Though I heard that that's a very buggy version and it's recommended to actually play this game on the PS4. And so that might be why Live and Run Games was only offering this PS4 edition as their printed option. But when I was looking through previews of this game, I just loved the kind of rich atmosphere. Um, it's very beautiful, and very kind of watercolory, and all the text seems very lyrical. So I think this is a very short game too, and one that I do want to uh, get to sometime soon. Um, it just looks like a very kind of pleasant um, experience. And who doesn't like some of these retellings of classic tales like Frankenstein's Creature? 
but I believe this is more of a walking simulator with maybe some point and click elements. Um, so it's not a very long game, but I'm really excited to get to this because it just looks beautiful. All right, so those were the six physical games that I picked up um, this past month. And along with my PS5, I also got a digital copy of God of War Ragnarok. So I'm not gonna play this game until I get to God of War 2018, which I do have on the PS4, um, my shelf here. So um, it'll probably be a while before I get to it, but the reason why I went with the God of War Ragnarok version for the PS5 is because it was basically the same price as buying just a regular PS5 with um, the disc option. So it was just discounted that way on Amazon. So I figured might as well get this one and get a free game. And I think eventually I'll probably get a physical copy of God of War Ragnarok. They might do maybe a game of the year version uh, with maybe the DLC or something. But if not, if you wait for most PlayStation games, they'll get heavily discounted eventually. So I'll probably wait till the games maybe around the 20 dollar range before picking up a physical copy. All right, so now to talk about my PS5 experience. So I've had this for a little bit over a week. Unfortunately, I haven't had too much time to play on it um, because of my work schedule, but the amount I have played has been a ton of fun so far. So the first game I booted up was Astro's Playroom uh, because I've just heard really good things and that was highly recommended uh, to start off my PS5 experience with. And I think it's a really great choice. It really brought me back to all the 3D action platformer games of my childhood, especially on the PS2. So it was nice kind of revisiting a modern version of that. And there's just so many cool things you could do with the uh, PS5 controller. And um, all the haptic feedback was really cool, actually. I didn't get super far in Astro's Playroom, most because I wanted to kind of savor it and play it slowly. And there's also another game that I really wanted to prioritize because I got a game code for. So I'm not going to talk too much about that. I'll save that for another video, but you probably guess which game it was. It's something that came out recently that has been the talk of the town. So I'll save my thoughts regarding that game and make a video about um, my experience sometime soon. Now, as far as my setup goes, I recently purchased this 32 inch LG monitor to experience the PS5 on. And this is my first HD monitor. So it's been really cool actually playing on this alone. Everything's just so bright and vivid and I wanna play more games on it to see kind of how the experience differs, um, especially with some of the PS4 titles I played and how they look like on the PS5. I think will be really interesting. On the monitor, I've also played with my Nintendo Switch in dock mode uh, for the first time with um, this new Tears of the Kingdom Pro controller, uh, which is also really neat. Uh, to finally experience gaming this way because I've been just a handheld gamer for so long, um, mostly due to convenience and I still really enjoy my handhelds, but I think it's a nice break to experience games on a console like this since I really haven't had too much of an opportunity to do so for so long. Um, despite having some access to a PS4 Pro um, for a couple years, it was honestly just a little bit limiting and so I really wanted to go out my way to play on that system. But I think now having the PS5 and this monitor and this new setup, I could see myself playing on the screen instead of on handheld more often. And the nice thing with having both the Switch docked as well as the PS5 there is I'm able to record some footage now, which I wasn't really able to before. So I'm hoping to incorporate more of that into my videos, which I'm excited about. I still need to kind of figure out how it all works before uh, finding a good balance of um, how to uh, integrate them in. But yeah, as you see here, my desk setup is pretty basic. I have my work laptop there on the left and sometimes I bring up my personal laptop. I've been thinking about getting a PC though. I think now that I have bought a Switch OLED and a PS5 within the past few months, uh, I really should slow down and not think about buying a PC anytime soon and just focus and enjoy the things I do have at the moment. But as you can see, my space is rather limited. Um, I do live in a studio apartment and it's not very big. The rent prices in California are very expensive. But I'm really happy with my setup, I'm especially able to display a lot of my games behind me and have a nice workstation um, where I could work and also uh, play. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how it's looking and it'll be interesting to see how things change over time. And if I move within the next year or so, um, how, again, the setup will continue to change. But yeah, I'm really loving the PS5 and I'm really happy I finally purchased it and I don't have to feel weird um, buying cheap PS5 games in my collection without actually owning the system itself. And I think now that having this monitor that um, displays everything well, I'll hopefully find a good balance of playing both in dock mode on the Switch as well as the PS5 there. So we'll kind of see how or if my way of playing games will change within the next few months or for the rest of the year. 
um, depending on how things go. But yeah, there's not too much more I could say regarding my new setup and playing both on the PS5 and on the Switch OLED. Uh, we'll see kind of um, how things change over time and if they do, I will definitely make some updates, um, future videos or whatnot. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that any of you may have. Um, I guess regarding my experience or if you're also in the market of looking for a Switch OLED or a PS5 and upgrading from whichever system you have at the moment. But I'll conclude this video here and get back to playing that game I mentioned earlier on the PS5 and hopefully come out with a, uh, I guess, experience or impressions video sometime soon. So until then, bye guys. Thank you.